Who will be the next victim? It's an all new Murder in Small Town X. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Previously on Murder in Small Town X. Hayden DeBeck is the leader of the Mind Science Organization. Mary Elizabeth Strange Girl. Stripping one day and then with the Reverend the next. We have Nate Flint, the deceased. We have Prudence Connor, who took the photos. And they might be trying to blackmail him. Mr. Flint withdrew $250,000 the day before his murder. My decision is Kristen. Yeah. You come back a fourth time, you are Wonder Woman. Hey, man. This is Dr. Neva. I think Thibodeau's been killed. <gasps> he was fine when I left the office last night. I came in this morning and he's gone. There's blood everywhere. I need somebody to come over right away. We'll be over as soon as possible. Somebody. Okay. Right now. Bye. Holy smokes. Okay. I'm out. Yeah. Got my radio. It's on. Good okay, to go. Catch you later, out. brother. Why don't we go Shit. inside and see what's going on? Okay. Um, just take a look in the room. I had Tib in here. He was laying there. He was fine. He was... Could he have gotten up and walked out? No. There's too, there's too much blood, and he was too weak. <gasps> I haven't had anybody else go in here, and nobody's touched anything. In the quiet town of Sunrise, Maine, a killer is on the loose. A reward has been offered to 10 ordinary people. They have been sent to Sunrise to play the killer's twisted game. Okay, now Dr. Bowden called me, kind of gave me a little brief rundown. She was a little hysterical. Tell me what you got. She called in 942, stating, claiming that uh, Tim's body was missing yeah. from her office. Over the entire room. I'll step out your window. Is there a zoom out, man? Right, there's a pool of blood on the floor. Right down right here. Right. In between, that's where I found the 357 bullet casing. Chris claims that the drag marks led them to the rear. I got here and the back door was open and I locked it before I left. But then there was no blood on the ground where the body would have been tossed. I looked for that and there was... Very similar to the Lodgett's crime scene. It appears Thibodeau was killed the same way as the others, so we'll take him off the board. After we had completed gathering evidence, Mo took me outside. He was very upset. Listen. He said that he holds us fully responsible for what happened to Tibbs. He gave us an audio cassette. He told me last night to give this to you. Our experts this morning looked at it, and it's a video recording made on an old children's video camera. Is that a video camera? Yes. I'm recording this because I'm, I don't know how much longer I can last. I'm feeling worse every day. I have so much crap in my lungs, I can't breathe. I'm spitting blood. I've loved her since I can remember. All I wanted was just to, to kiss her. I'm sorry, I'm talking about Connor. She asked me to lie, and I did. I lied for her. There's something I have to say. Connor killed Nate Flint the night of the murders. We got back from Bangor around 1 a.m. She said she had to go see him, Nate. She asked me to cover him for her, to lie. She hated him, I know that. I love Connor, Semper Fi. Comments. I just think uh, he might be a little bit twisted emotionally. I still don't believe that Connor did it. 
Well, we do need to follow up on that. Track one, Connor, I want two people on this track. What we need to talk about is what her relationship was with Nate Flint. Thibodeau says that she hated him. Did she, or was she actually in love with him? We need to find out. Let's confront her. Let's, let's get the truth on that. Now, you guys put together this bank statement showing Nate Flint received regular deposits coming from a company called Enhanced Power. We trace the company name. It's owned by General DeBeck's Mind Science Organization. Why is he paying Nate Flint off? Why did he pay him 250000 Why did Nate take the money out two days before his murder? And where is the money? OK, track two is going to be the DeBeck team. The cult is holding one of their initiations today. They call it a cleansing, and it's the only time they let strangers inside the compound. That's going to be the team's goal, to go through this cleansing, get in there, and ask the tough questions of the general. OK, what we need to do is find out who the lifeguard is going to be. That's found out by the last will and testament of the last investigator that went out and didn't return. The person that I feel would serve best as lifeguard next would be Katie. I think she would do an excellent job at leading our group for the next three days. I wish everybody good luck in capturing the killer, and I hope to see you on the other side. Kristen went out the last time. That was Jeff's decision to send her out as lifeguard. He was pretty happy that day to be able to send Kristen. He said that she burned bridges with him, and there were some things that couldn't be forgiven. I keep trying to reiterate to Kristen that, hey, beauty's from within. Didn't she learn that as a kid? But then I'm talking to other teammates here, and I'm realizing that I don't think she's really ever truly had friends that really told her the truth. I don't like Jeff, and Jeff doesn't like me. So I knew he was going to send me out, and um, I came back again. Good work out there. Be safe. Thank you, Gary. It is one All right. It's 1.30 exactly. Hey, Samantha. Where are you headed? I'm going out to the back. Are you? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Guess we'll be yeah. going out with yeah. you. How, how'd you get invited? Well, um, I asked to go out there. You did? If you're going through some tough times, you know, it's good. It, it, Helps you get back to a good place and, you know, get Here's sort of set Is that our bus? I called the garage. They said that Connor is out at Thibodeau's cabin. We're threatening her, too. So, look, you don't talk, we'll expose it. If you want the pictures out, we'll put them out. We'll just hand them right over to Frank. Sick and tired of walking on pins and needles around these She's people. She's not going to talk. She's a tough cookie. I'm a tough cookie, too. What's that smoke? Dude, what is she burning? I take it this is it. This is wow. it. Line up in a single file line. Walk backwards. Follow me. Keep walking. Stand here. Welcome. I wasn't shocked to see Mary Elizabeth because she's obviously a girl that's very easily influenced in life. From one minute as a stripper, the next minute's with Reverend Rusty, to now at General DeBeck's compound. This is going to change your life. Yeah, I'm ready for anything with this town, the way things are going right now. You there. Shirt off. In the tub. Mary Elizabeth was at the compound. She stood and watched us wash ourselves for about 45 minutes. <laughs> Scrub. Turn around. Behind your ears. Keep scrubbing. Clean. Keep cleaning. Our goal for the day was to uh, get to the compound and find out exactly why General Hayden DeBeck was paying $250,000 to Nate Flynn. And the next thing is that uh, Reverend Rusty comes up. I was caught off guard to see Reverend Rusty there, thinking that, you know, he's the preacher of the town. Are you ready to change your life? Yeah. Are you ready to change your life? Yeah. Are you ready to change your life? Yeah. Kind of scared me. The world is merciless, and to conquer the world, you must be equally merciless. Then the general comes in.
So you want to change your life? Well, today, you embark on a journey, a journey in three important steps. Order, strength, life. When you have passed through those three levels, you will be cleansed. Then, I will speak privately to each one. Why are you doing that? I'm conducting a funeral for a friend. I'm a little confused right now with Connor, but, you know, even the toughest people in the world have a heart, and if they lose someone they really care for, then it, it, it hurts. I don't care what people are saying. They're saying that they saw you at that dock. Yeah. They saw you with the bang stick. Yeah. They saw you throw it into the water. Yeah. We're trying to clear up what's going on. I'm not going to talk to you in front of these sweepers. I told you to stay the hell away from me, you vultures. I'll meet you tonight at the bar at 9, but I won't talk to you right now. Did they know you were having an affair with Would me? Would you get out of here now? Okay. That... Leave! The first day I walked into this town, I thought there was one killer and everyone else was innocent. There are more skeletons in the closet of this town than, any, I think, in all of New York City. There's three elements of the mind science. They consist of order, strength, and logic. The first being order. So we go in a room and there's probably 50 decks of cards. Order the first deck. And he's like, I want them. Two through ace, same suit. He's throwing four and five decks at a time. He wants to see how we'll work together. Is the order of the day. Jeff and I were all right. Samantha's a little shaky. She, you can tell she's about to break down. Order, order strength, strength, logic. logic. Together. Order, order strength, strength, logic. Say it in order. Order, order strength, strength, logic. That's part of the task. Order, order strength, strength, logic. So they take us to another room, which is part of the order. And you have some flashcards with words. There's probably 15 cards Jeff had, I had, and Samantha had. Samantha would say soap washed readable. Jeff would say soap washed readable and a new word. Begin again. Spare. Spare virtuous. Spare virtuous neat. Spare virtuous neat spotless. Spare virtuous neat spotless washed. Spare virtuous neat spotless washed. You're giving in to weakness, Samantha, and that's a mindset of lack and limitation. It's possible with a thousand cards. And until you can do it with a thousand cards, I'm not even sure why we should take you into the next room. You do it. I can't do it. I do it. By that time, I was ready to go with her. My mind was being overworked, too. I decided that I should probably stick around, though, for the team. We were there for a specific reason. The general's time can't be wasted on the weak. Let's move on to the next phase, strength. We went for a little jog that took us down to a peninsula. Run and keep up with us. Well set the pace. Keep an ordered mind and a strengthened body. This water comes off an iceberg. The Reverend Jelen, baptize yourself, cleanse yourself. Well, I was trying to get out as fast as I could. Uh, the water was about 34 degrees. My legs felt like I couldn't feel them. I would have done about anything to meet the general, but I also would have done about anything just to compete with Jeff. Welcome to the final test of strength. We get top of this tower, which I'm a little scared of the heights, but, uh, and the reverend's up there with uh, two brooms and tells us to hold these brooms out. Okay, fine, I can do that. About 15 minutes later, though, I'm ready to die. Oh, and, and, and. By this time, I've had to repeat the alphabet forwards, backwards, whatever way I can. And Jeff's over here trying to run off multiples of seven, and he can't even add seven and seven. 91, 98, As doubts enter your mind, examine them. There was uh, some competition going on on top of that tower. I'm sure Jeff was thinking the same way I was thinking. Uh, 18, 17. I didn't want to let my broom down unless Jeff was going to either let down at the same time or let down before me. And I'm sure Jeff was thinking the same way. See who, who could hold it out longer. Three, two, one. Did I say hold for 15 minutes? I meant 30.
Come on, get in. I want to talk to you away from those damn sweepers. They've been following me all day. I know you were asking earlier about my island. My dad was a senior master sergeant in the army. And uh, he was also the foreman of the Kingfisher Cannery. Now, my dad owned Dog Island. When I was about eight years old, he uh, ran into some money problems and had to take a loan out from Kingfisher. And they wouldn't give it to us unless we put the island up for collateral. And uh, we lost it. My dad started drinking heavily, and he died. I blame the Flints. I blame this whole town. It's as if they put a gun to his head. They might as well have done the same thing. My dad was an honorable man, and he was a war hero, and he was a part of this town. And they took that from him. I need a beer. of the way that I felt about the Flints, I fell in love with Nate. Nate came to me, and he felt that what Kingfisher had done to our family was wrong. And so it kind of opened up my heart to him. So you say you spoke to him until 2 in the morning, and then you left. Then you never mentioned the pictures to you? Nope. So your relationship with him was pretty good until that night? No, where no, you no, ended. I ended it. I right. had to end it. We want to talk to you. Get your hands off me. You've reached the final stage. Roger. Sweep. 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 Yeah. One person's holding a bucket of water with one arm. OK, Alan, don't stutter. Let's go. While the other one answers questions. Each question he gets correct, they dip a cup of water out of this bucket. If not, easy. you're still hanging. Brothers and sisters have I none. But this man's father is my father's son. Who was he looking at? The. I don't know. I guarantee, said the pet shop salesman, that this parrot will repeat every word it hears. The customer bought the parrot, but found it would not speak a single word. Nevertheless, the salesman told the truth. Explain. The parrot's deaf. Take the glass out. Next question. Jason is lying dead. He has an iron bar across his back and some food in front of him. Why did he die? I have no idea. Pass. Come on. I passed. Jason is a mouse. I wish Doc had still been around, and maybe Doc and Katie could have answered some of the logic questions, because you got a hick from Knoxville and a model who's not too sharp trying to answer those questions. Never heard one of those brain teasers in my entire life. Suddenly, a car that did not have its headlights on came racing down the road. At the last minute, the car swerved to avoid him. How did the driver of the car manage to see the man in the road? not move forward or backward without severely damaging its roof. The truck driver was perplexed until a little girl standing by Attorney in Alabama doesn't speech. have a brother who's a doctor. How can this be? <laughs> doctor? Say, say again, please. This man marries 20 women in his city, but isn't charged with bigamy. Why not? He's standing They're in front all of you, different times. What? He's standing in front of you. What? He's a priest. He marries 20 people. Very good. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> I'm going to go speak to the general and see if he'll greet you. Stand as you did in the beginning. So they come in and say, uh, the general see you. So we this walk is us after in. all this eight this hours. This is eight hours of training. So you're like training. saying, you're hoping for like at least 20 minutes of him answering questions. Well, gentlemen. You've had quite a busy day, haven't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And have you learned what you came here to learn? Let's talk about your puzzle. I was going to ask about the um, $250,000. I gave Nate Flint $250,000 in cash in return for the Kingfisher Sardine Factory land. And just as 
because he was about to come through on his part of the deal. He was killed. And who do you think wound up with my $250,000? Prudence Connor. And when you see Connor, tell her she can't run forever. Gentlemen. We spent about eight hours there that day, from uh, physical conditioning to uh, tons of mental tests. All this for the group, go in his office, wait on the general, he comes in, we get four minutes with him. And it's not even Jeff and I talking, it's the general. We didn't get to say much, and that's what drove me crazy. Uh... I'm like, can we ask you anything? No. <clears throat> I think we've got the sweeper that Connor attacked. He's down at the boat dock. I need you guys for an ID. Like, so they've, they've never been this bad? No, that's the thing. We never have disturbance with these sweepers. They're annoying, they're weird, and they're a pain in the ass, but they never cause any problems. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. And this evening, one of them touched her. She, she kind of shoved him. And See, he, he went right through the glass door. If there's a problem, you let me step in, all right? OK. Duncan, none of these two. No. None of these two. So it's a guy? Describe him for me. Tall about your height, blonde hair, young looking. Like suit. They all freaking looking like to me, you know? My gosh. Oh my god, you see that? Someone's boat just went up. Did you feel it? Yeah, Holy it. crap! It was like a bomb! That's Connor's houseboat. That's Connor's houseboat? That's Connor's houseboat. And I felt that, I and then I saw the light. Dude, it was big. Oh. If she was on that boat, you could scratch her off as a suspect. Sure, everybody heard it last night. You know, you know Connor's houseboat exploded, but there was no body was found in the wreckage at this time. All right. We're presuming that Connor is still alive, but we're going to follow up with that. I want to find out what happened. Anything else to report? She was with um, Thibodeau the night of the murder, and she left Tibbs at about 1.30 in the morning to go speak to Nate Flint. She uh, didn't know anything about the photos. After seeing them in Jeff's hands, she says they're definitely surveillance photos. Doesn't know who shot the photos either. OK, track two, the Beck team. And it sounds to me like you guys were practically tortured with physical and mind games during your cleansing initiation at the Beck's Mind Science Call. Hats off to both of you. You did finally get the meeting, and you did get DeBeck to admit that he gave Nate Flint $250,000. We've heard from Mo, who's now running Thibodeau's ferry. He's been asked to take General DeBeck to Dog Island at 7 tonight. Why is DeBeck going to Dog Island? Dog Island belonged to her father. Her, his name was Michael Connors. Maybe we should yeah, get out there before he goes there, just to check it, see okay. what he's looking for. I'll make that track one, then. Go to Dog Island, set up surveillance at Connor's cabin, and find out what's going on between DeBeck and Connor. Track two, Connor's houseboat. Go to where the wreckage washed up and see if you can find out what caused the explosion. Just missed the Coast Guard. Guy said that uh, he thought maybe it was the plastic explosive, like C4 or something like that. I just hoped to God she wasn't on the boat. Did you uh, deal with any C4? Yeah, we had deck cord. You set it off, and then it'll feed into the main explosive of, and say, C4 or something. And if he, someone did put that on the gas tank, would that, yeah, yeah, that would explode it? Yeah. Come with me over to the paper. There's something about William Lambert I think you should know. He was doing the same thing down in Florida. He had this development deal. He was going to build this golf course and this resort on the Gulf Coast. He didn't have the money raised. And I think that Nate Flint was on to him. Hello. We were just talking about you. I'm here to terminate your employment. Well, uh, to do that, you have to own the paper. No, um, Mr. Lambert does. Frank, uh, why don't you gather things up and, uh, we'll head on outside. I'm not going, Dudley. Come on, Frank, let's not make this harder than it already is. You know, you cannot own free speech in this town. Go home, Frank. Take it easy. Work on your boat. Okay, let me help you go here. I'll grab your bag and help you. There's a serial killer in the town, Dudley. Why are you wasting your time with this, huh? I get to do my job in this town, which is to find out what the truth is and what's going on. 
And right now, there's nothing I can do about this. You know, you are a moron, Dudley. You're an imbecile. I have no I'm choice, a Frank. Moron, Dudley. Graphic nature of this program. Viewer discretion is advised. Our plan is that once we get in there, we set up what we have to set up right away. Find the best angles to view everything. After that, we can relax. There's pictures of Connor. Against the wall. OK, perfect. Cameras we need, because I'm going to hook them up. Two cameras. Good. Second camera? OK. You have to turn it. The room's sideways right now. Sideways? Yeah. How's that? Now it's upside down. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, now go to the other camera. That's it. They're here. Dude, what's up? Yeah, but there's nothing I. We have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. That's not the general. It looks like it's Connor. We're going to get busted. I don't have anything left. My family's gone. The paper's gone. I'm just going to focus on the story still. I figure that since you guys pulled into town, I have been pretty forthcoming with all sorts of information. And I know for a fact that you two guys lied to my face earlier today. I asked you specifically if you saw anybody at the Bex compound besides the Reverend. You said no. I talked to Sam this morning. I know she was there. Correct, but let's not be a hypocrite. Uh, you never told us about you having an affair with Sam. We might not. We might not hear it from here, though. It's not transmitting. I didn't turn on the audio. Damn it. Okay. Who's that? is not what's important, it's what they're saying. What's in that bag? Have I cheated on my wife and child? No. So I, I don't know what you're going through. This I really is, don't. Let me ask you, this is your tactic to get I'm me to cooperate to with you? Tactic. I'm not trying to play games. Okay. Am I trying to play games? Well, if We're you want me... We're here for the same right, reason, right. Frank. So stop playing games We're, with us, no. and we won't play games with you. <laughs> okay. You don't think that's fair? Why don't you let your friend talk for a little bit? Yeah. I was caught off guard. Uh, I could tell Frank was caught off guard. I don't know, it was kind of good investigator, bad investigator, but, but it, it, it bothered me. We got Nate Flint. We have uh, Lida Rose Blodgett. Where, where was he, both of those murders? Right. Where was he? No one was an eyewitness to where he was. Yeah, OK. I'm here. just saying he's a suspect. That's fine, that's fine. But here and you I'm go, here's the difference. Kiss suspect's ass. See if this were me, I'd bust in on him. Jimmy Tinker and Dog. MIP to Secret Square. We have uh, Connor and Tinker about to get busy. Either I can open up a window and eavesdrop, but we can't hear a thing. You want to so take I... a chance and go out there? But you said you'd come here. Uh, well, why not? I don't trust you. All right, uh, how about uh, Shackford Head? Connie, you're not going out. No, you're not going out there. I'll handle the back, okay? So I cannot believe Tinker. Oh, yeah, they were really making it out and going at it. So do you think that she's playing him or he's playing her? I think they were playing the Flints. <laughs> her houseboat explodes yesterday, her best friend dies, and she's drinking and happy and cheering and hooking up with Jimmy Tinker. Connor gets a phone call. I hear Jimmy screaming, begging her not to go. They take off. She's going to meet someone. I have no clue who it is because we couldn't hear a darn thing. All I know is she's meeting someone. Could be the general. And who do you think wound up with my $250,000? Prudence Connor. Ah! <laughs> 
God. Help. Get me. Hello, this is Alan. Go ahead. This is Bill Thompson. I called the Sunrise Police and... Chief Duncan transferred me to you. I'm the manager of the Trickers Motor Lodge on Route 1. Right. Uh, I talked to a couple of you before. Uh, it was about that disfigured man who did away with himself in one of our cabins. Right. Someone broke into that same cabin during the middle of the night. Around 3 or 4 in the morning, completely destroyed the place. And I just got a glimpse of someone coming out of that cabin. All in black. I couldn't tell you if it was a man or a woman. They had their arms full of stuff from the cabin. They threw it in the bed of this old pickup truck and took off. I don't know what came over me. I jumped in my car and, and, and went after them. Then the tailgate of that pickup truck flew open. Right. All the things in the truck went all over the place, into the woods, everywhere. I figured you could find the spot. It's just after that weird old sign on the road. Some old Forest Service sign. Yeah. Connor. Connor. Yeah. Connor's doesn't have a bed on it. Connor has a black truck. She has the largest motive out of everybody. She has hate. Lambert did not hate the Flints. Uh, Lambert only hated Letter Rose Blodgett. She hates the Flints and Letter Rose Blodgett. And she made that very clear. All right, guys, listen up. General Hayden DeBeck's limo crashed on an isolated road near Shackford Head early this morning. But no bodies were found. Now, yesterday, track one. Okay, now you booked in some video and some audio, and the audio had some trouble. However, the video recorder did pick up a portion of the audio. Easy. <laughs> you had to be to put yourself. Well, you were a good photographer. Uh -huh. Well, you took some good photos. Yeah. $250,000. <laughs> God, this is a... He is such a chump. Well, uh, well, why not? I don't trust you, Greg. What do you mean that you're wrong? All right, well, uh, how about, uh, Shackford Head? What time? Excellent work. Yes. All right, let's talk about it. You know, Jimmy took the pictures of Connor and Nate. They were blackmailing. Um, okay, they have the money. The back is in on it somehow, too. Because I guess he was supposed to meet them there. Mm -hmm. Somehow the plan changed. But she's high on the list now. Someone's got all these people fooled. I think a lot of people are in on this, and it's a big conspiracy, and everyone's been working on it for a long time, and then I think someone's playing all of them. But who's killing? I don't know that yet. One other thing. When Duncan arrived at the scene of DeBeck's limo accident, he found this in the passenger compartment. Question is, what rank was Connor's father? The first thing that came on mind was Lieutenant. Connor's father's. My father was. Oh, she said that so darn fast. I think she what's, said her dad was a lieutenant. What's the highest in the enlisted? Master Sergeant. That's it. Master Sergeant? That's it. Master Sergeant. Master yes. Sergeant sounds. Yeah. That's it. That's correct. Oh, man. Was he a first sergeant? I don't want to throw that many out. Master Perfect. Sergeant, if you want it, take it. I, we'll take it. It's a group. What was Thibodeau? Yeah. Good work. Good job. All right. All right. Woo -hoo! That's it. Oh, man. Good work. Good job. So Sam Larrabee has cleared off our suspect board for today. You guys are doing extremely well in this investigation. And again, we've opened the red envelope, so I will be back tonight to open the black envelope at 5 p.m. to play the killer's game. You guys aren't going to pull anything funky hey, on me and vote for me, are you? On your face. No, we're not going to pull anything funky on you. Right now, our line is to get Jeff out of the house. He wants the whole group to vote for him tonight. No, he wants Katie. We're going to vote for him. But we're voting for him. He's volunteered to go out tonight, which I think the group's going to vote for him, because that's easy. Someone's volunteering. Uh, Christian doesn't want to go out, so they're all going to pick him, so it's going to be, you know, hard for me, and which it should be. I feel good with uh, the uh, five teammates that are left. Uh... 
I still think that you and Jeff will end up together when y'all get back to California and Oregon. Yeah, you saw my tape. I would plow right over someone like that. Okay. It's now time to play the killer's game and open up the black envelope. So let's begin. Angel, why don't you start us off? Things are coming down to the wire. He's been expressing some anger about being in the house. So let's add some excitement to his life. Let's send him for the killer club. This evening, I'm not going to choose Angel. He's just been extremely trustworthy and just an awesome guy. Angel's an excellent investigator. He's actually been on three tracks that he's had the answer. So I'm definitely going to have to keep Angel around. Tonight, I pick is Kristen. What I would ask is everyone to turn around and face the wall while I make the tally. OK, you can turn back around. The group has made its choice. We have tied. Kristen, Jeff, you have been chosen. Part of the lifeguard's duty is to break a tie. Katie, if you would come up, please. I was asked a really good question today. And I was asked if I made friends. I think that I have made good friends. You guys always respected my opinions. And based on the dynamics of the group, that's, what, that's what's hard about being the lifeguard, is you have to sit back and you have to observe. When Jeff was gone, I felt Kristen was more productive with Angel and Alan and I. And I felt when Kristen was gone, Jeff was more productive with Angel, Alan, and I. The winners of the 2001 shiny black patent leather envelopes are Kristen and Jeff. By doing this, I think it's going to make everything better. Whoever comes back tonight, we're going to start fresh again. Now, the killer has told us that there will be two locations in here that need to be searched. Two people will go out, but only one will come back. Take the two envelopes out, and you can give either of the envelopes of your choice to the first person that the group has chosen. Take your angel. Thank you. Good luck, you guys. If I could have you open up the envelope and read the location where you're going, Jeff. Uh, I'm going to a storage house behind the compound. Kristen? I'm going to a junkyard, walking down a path, making a left, and then entering into a trailer. I will make arrangements for transportation for both of you tonight at 9 PM. And I wish both of you the best of luck. It's either I have a slow death as it is now, or I have a quick death out on the track. I'm going to have to hope and pray that every time I go out on the killer track, I'm going to have to come back alive. So, but that's luck of the draw. So <laughs> hopefully I keep getting lucky. Thanks for sending me out again. Am I with you, X-ray, or Mo? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. for sending me out again. Good luck. Can you bring me back alive? Hi, guys. Good luck, Jeff. See you in about two hours, all right? We'll be waiting for you. Bye. Are you happy about tonight? It's the game, right? I just hope the killer takes care of the problem. Do you mind if I ask you another question? Sure. Are you scared? Am I scared? Yeah. I'm scared to death. I mean, I could go out tonight and die. I, I have no clue what's in store for me right now. When I took out Lindsay, I, I just heard a, a shot, it sounded like a gunshot. Hey, do I really want to hear this? You're going to think I'm a little bit crazy, X-Ray, but I'm quite excited, to be honest. So you are confident? This game called life is so mental. You just got to think positive, man. So there, you have sent out Kristen once more. <laughs> you people are, are, are ruthless. So you're going to wait here for me? Yeah, yeah. Um... I hope you don't hear a loud scream. Here's my water. I'll leave it there. I'll see you in a bit.
here? What do we got here? You have not yet reached your final destination. Water tank. Enter the water tank. Go down the steps. Small Town X. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. Ah! It all connects somewhere. We just don't have the glue to put it all together. You want to rip it? Perfect. Jeff was getting a little aggravated and getting on my nerves. Realize this, Angel. People like you and me don't get along. Compound is a complete anarchy. Everyone's pretty hopeless. And the Angel struck him down with a lightning bolt. He's lying. He could really be the killer. I'm, like, fearful of my life. I mean, he's crazy. Katie, Katie, come in. Tonight's episode featured music by Chocolate Genius. On the season premiere, that 70s show is going somewhere it's never been before. The 80s. Everybody have fun tonight. For Donna, the future looks good. Can I kiss the bride? Sure. For Eric, it's downright ugly. Where's the food? I told you he'd fall for the first piece of tail that came along. That 70s show season premiere, Tuesday, September 18th on Fox.